could be keto related, fasting related, or whatever you want to chat about today. So let me hit live on YouTube and then we're officially started. Okay, I'm live. Here we are every Wednesday, 12 p.m. Eastern time. I am live with you and I'm doing a Q&A about keto, about fasting, about all things regarding your health. Please let me know where you're watching from, whether you're live with me or on the replay, put your city, put your state. I see Hillary in Philly, Philly Hillary. I like the way that, that goes together. I see South Dakota. Hey, Holly. I see London in the house. Good to see you, London. Hope you're having a grand time over there. So my name is Ben Azadi for Just Meeting. It is so cool to meet you. I am the best-selling author of four books. I'm the founder of Keto Camp. Here at Keto Camp, we're on a mission to educate and to inspire one billion people. Uh, I'm excited to teach a little bit about keto and fasting and answer, and answer your questions today. I also have a special announcement I'm going to share with you shortly and some other cool things we'll get into. So here's what I want you to do. I want you to start posting your questions for me. What are some of the challenges you might be having? What are some burning questions you might have? I'm going to do my best to answer as many as possible in the next 30 to 45 minutes. I see Fort Worth in the house, Texas, Valencia in the house. I see David in the UK. Hey, David, I see you there. I see Shelly in North California. I see Carol in Palm Coast, Florida, fellow Floridian like myself. I'm in Miami Beach, Florida. I see Philippines in the house, Vancouver Island. I see Betty in uh, Georgia. Good to see you, Betty. Uh, okay, let's answer some questions. Nice to meet you, Anna. Thanks for joining. Hey, Jody in Colorado. Thanks for joining. All right, so let's get to some questions. I have a question here that just came in from Lori Elizabeth, who says, does Truvia in my green tea break my fast? I'm in Yuma, Arizona. We are 20 miles away from the Mexican border. Good question. Okay, so will it start the digestive process? Probably not. For some people, there, there could be this cephalic, cephalic insulin response. But here's what I would tell you to do. Number one, what's your goal? If your goal, to, if your goal is to lower glucose and insulin and burn fat, and that trivia with your green tea is helping you stay in that fasted state, I'm all for it. But if you want to have more of a purist view on it, uh, then maybe you just have the green tea without the Truvia. But you could always test. You could always test your glucose. It's always a great idea to test your blood glucose. Have your green tea with Truvia and then test your blood glucose 30 to 45 minutes after and see what happens. See if you see an, an, a, a glucose rise. Uh, if your glucose is rising, then maybe some of the autophagy benefits are going away. So that's where like a Keto Mojo comes into hand or a CGM. I actually have one on. It's kind of, you know, beat up here, but I have a CGM, which is a continuous glucose monitor. One of the best things you can use. My favorite biohacking tool is a continuous glucose monitor. If you really want to fine tune your protocol and see how foods affect your blood glucose, because let's rewind for a second. One of the best ways to age gracefully, to burn fat, to optimize health and vitality and to re reverse symptoms and conditions you might be dealing with is to lower your glucose. And I don't mean as low as possible. I mean optimal glucose ranges. And a CGM, which is a continuous glucose monitor, I have one right now, gives you a 24 seven look at your glucose. So you could see what that tea, what that coffee is doing to your glucose. You could see what stress and sleep does to your glucose. You could see what healthy foods might be doing to your glucose because just because a food is healthy, very important teaching note I'm gonna share with you right now. Put this in your notes. A food might be healthy for you, but when I consume that food, not healthy for me or vice versa, I might have an amazing response from eating some vegetables and you might get a glucose response because you might have leaky gut or a sensitivity to it, but you wouldn't know unless you're looking at what happens to your glucose after you have it. This is called postprandial glucose. So I highly recommend everybody wear a CGM at least for a month to get an understanding on what your glucose readings are because the higher your glucose, the faster you age, understand that. And if you could get an idea of what your fasting glucose is, your postprandial glucose is, and if it's not in the optimal ranges, then you have some work to do. But now you have the awareness to customize your approach. Like Becky is saying, it's very individualized. So I'm using one from NutriSense. They are amazing. If you want to learn more about them, you head to NutriSense.io slash KetoCamp. They gave us an awesome coupon code for $30 off 
any of their CGM plans, which is Ben30. I'll repeat that. Nutrisense.io slash keto camp, camp with the K. Ben30 for $30 off your device. Alina will post a link for that as well. Um, and they're amazing. There's also other brands out there and companies that do great work as well. Uh, I like Nutrisense. They also give you a dedicated dietitian that works with you through the app that I could text right now. And how it works is you apply it. It's painless. You have it on for 14 days. You put your phone to it. Gives you a reading. It is awesome. All right. Next question says, how many fat bombs can I eat in a day? Says Carol instead of a keto meal. Fat bombs could be great, but if you're having them throughout the day in between your main meals, it's going to put you in a fed state. Your body does have to burn the calories in your fat bomb before it goes back to your body fat. So it could slow down fat loss. It, could, it starts a digestive process. So I would say if you're going to have fat bombs, have it with your meals. It's, it's a good idea not to snack in between your meals. And how many can you have? Maybe you could have one fat bomb with each meal as like a dessert. I'm okay with that. But the problem is when we have that fat bomb in between your meals, that is the issue because you start to digest the process. You are, um, have to, your body has to burn the fat calories before it burns body fat calories. Anna says, wondering about accumulated fluid in the lower lid, wondering about vitamins and liver problems. Yeah, you could always do blood work, Anna. You could do some liver enzymes, ALT, AST. You could do some, uh, look at your kidneys and see how that looks as well. See if your kidneys are functioning well. Look at creatinine uh, to kind of get an idea if uh, there are liver or kidney problems. But if you're feeling like you're accumulating water and you're retaining water and you feel bloated, it's usually because of insulin. Uh, that's one of the causes of feeling bloated and retaining water. Insulin is. So as you do keto, intermittent fasting, you're going to lower insulin. It, it should help with the retaining of water. Good to see you in Morris, Canada. Lori says, I love my keto mojo. They're awesome too. Anna says, I'm also down to the last 20 pounds and I'm yo-yoing five pounds. I tend to get it carried away with carbs at night. Yeah, you want to, that's going to help. If you could avoid having anything before bed, three hours before bed, it's going to help with weight loss. But congratulations, you could do it. Mix things up, make sure your sleep is good and have the carbs at least three hours before bed. Constance, good to see you on here. Good to see some great Keto Camp Academy members. I see Mayan, uh, Mayan who's joining from Abu Dhabi. Good to see you. I sure could use a CGM. Need to find the link. The link is Nutrisense.io slash Keto Camp. And the coupon code is Ben30. It will be, benefit you tremendously. Betty says, does Nutrisense allow you to test any time? Been told it's only one conference with the person. Um, what do you mean by one conference? You could test any time. You can do it every minute if you want, but you don't have to. If I tested, uh, let's say if I brought my phone to my CGM monitor in two hours from now, it'll give me the readings for the last two hours. Uh, so you don't have, there's no limit to how many times you could test. You could test over and over and over in the morning. When I wake up after I've slept for eight hours, I hit the CGM and it gives me the last eight hours of readings or at least to the last time I tested. So it's pretty cool. There's no limit to how many times you could test. I saw a question here on YouTube. Summer, good to see you on here. It says I put electrolytes on in my, elect I put electrolytes in my green tea. Cool. I like that. Monica, good to see you as well from the Bahamas. Hello, Ben. Thank you for your teachings. God bless you. Thank you, Alisa. God bless you too. Tracy says, hi from Connecticut. We've had two out of four seasons before lunch today. We've had two out of four seasons out of lunch today. I'm not sure what that means, but hi, Tracy. New York in the house. Is it normal to fast for 24 hours and not lose weight? Yes, yeah, Scott, fasting is not used. I wouldn't use fasting as a weight loss tool. I would use it as a health tool. If you're not losing weight, maybe you're losing inches. Maybe you're losing body fat. So I would measure that. The scale is one marker, but it's not the most important marker. Get some body fat measurements done. If you're exercising and, and strength training, you might be putting on muscle. So um, look at those factors as well. Betty Crazy says, my doctor won't prescribe me a CGM because I'm not pre-diabetic. You know, that's a challenge. If you go to your doctor and want to get a CGM, they'll tell you you have to be sick in order to get it, right? NutriSense bypasses that. It removes all the barriers. So there you go, Betty. NutriSense.io slash KetoCampBen30 at checkout. 
Day one, pillar three, carnivore. What are your thoughts on occasional diet soda? Thank you for your incredible book, Keto Flex. You're awesome, Charmin. Thank you. Uh, not a fan of diet soda. It has artificial sweeteners in it, sucralose, aspartame, which are not great for the gut and could, for some individuals, could create a glucose and insulin response and for some even create cravings. So I would have something like Zevia instead, which is stevia flavored carbonated water. That would be a better option. And good job doing day one pillar three, Charmin. You got this. Carnivore is amazing. I love carnivore. Is a 24-hour fast good enough? Uh, I like doing, a uh, who's that? Joy uh, Jaws Co. I like doing a 24-hour fast one to two times per week. Great way to reset the gut. There was a study from MIT that showed a 24-hour water fast strengthen intestinal stem cells in mice. And here's why fasting is so great. If you're watching on TikTok, you see a video that I posted yesterday and today that are, that's blowing up on TikTok. I posted a video yesterday on why eating every two to three hours is aging you faster. That over, already has over 100,000 views since yesterday. And then I posted one on autophagy, which is about, I think has 10,000 views from this morning on TikTok. Inside of your body, you have this innate intelligence. And I just spoke about this Three days ago in Las Vegas, I was teaching in Las Vegas and I spoke th about this at the Biohacking Congress. For many, many years, scientists believe that the intelligence of the human body, the innate intelligence was your DNA nucleus. And that premise kind of sucks because if you, are, if you have cancer that runs in the family, diabetes or whatever autoimmune that runs in the family, you got those genes. You, you cannot change the genes you're born with, which is your DNA nucleus. And if that's your premise, that your genes are your intelligence and your genes run the show, then it's pretty much you're screwed. But the great news is that's not the case. Recent research, Dr. Bruce Lipton and other scientists looked at cells in a laboratory settings and they would remove the DNA nucleus and the cell would, would live on for up to two months and sometimes even longer before the cell went rogue which means, okay, if you remove the DNA nucleus with the cell so fu still functioning, how could the intelligence be the DNA? Something else is running the show here, right? So they said, what is it? Let's try removing the cell membrane and see what happens. So they remove the cell membrane and boom, instant death. What does that go to show you? That goes to show that the intelligence and what runs the show is the cell membrane. Everybody watching right now, I want you to type this in the comment section so we're on the same page. Life begins, life ends at the cell membrane. Everybody write that. I want to make sure we're on the same page. Life begins and life ends at the cell membrane. If you don't know what the cell membrane is, you have 50 to 70 trillion cells inside of your body and every cell has this layer outside of it called the cell membrane. But also within your cells, the mitochondria has two membranes, the outer mitochondria membrane and the inner mitochondria membrane. Guess what the membrane's made of? I see you, Judy. Good job. The membrane is made up of protein, saturated fat, and cholesterol. There you go, Dace. Protein, saturated fat, and cholesterol. The membrane is the bodyguard of your cells. There is an environmental stimulus that attaches to the receptor sites integrated into your membrane that communicate with your DNA. Environmental stimulus, what's that? Your thoughts, the food you eat, your lifestyle behaviors, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If you have toxic thoughts, if you're eating fast food, processed food, uh, have a lot of toxins, the membrane is going to signal to the DNA nucleus to start turning on. I'm going to use the word turning on, but it's really making it brighter, like a light that's getting brighter. So bad genes are turned on, essentially. But if you have positive uh, environmental stimulus, so healthy food, healthy thoughts, gratitude, removing toxins, and you're eating and living a clean lifestyle, like with ketosis and fasting, then the light becomes dim, and eventually the light shuts off. Now, it could turn back on, but the more you get good at your protocol and routine, the light turns off. It's the membrane that controls everything. I see your comments, Constance, Pamela. I love that. Now, I have some more questions here I'm going to get to. Before I do, I have a special, I have two announcements, okay? Two announcements. So number one, I was just in Las Vegas three days ago speaking at the Biohacking Congress. 
And there's a special announcement I'm going to share with you right now. You ready? How many of you who are watching on YouTube and Facebook know the individuals I'm showing on my screen right now? Who are, the, who are these faces right here that you see on the screen? This is taken for three days ago in Las Vegas, Nevada. So you have me, of course, on the left here. And then you have in the middle the amazing, incredible Dr. Mindy Pels, who has a, an amazing YouTube channel, The Resetters Podcast. And then on the right of this photo, you have Dr. Daniel Pompa who is the Michael Jordan of health teachers and health educators. He is my mentor. He is an incredible, incredible resource. We all spoke on stage at the Biohacking Congress, and it was an amazing lecture. All three of us went back to back to back, and we set up our lectures very strategically to kind of play off of each other. I spoke about the membrane, ketosis, fat adaptation, sugar burning, fat burning. Uh, Pampa came after me, and he spoke about hormesis, feast, famine, cycling, and this amazing principle called hormesis. And then Mindy capped it off by talking about fasting and breaking your fast the right way, supporting the gut. But here's the announcement. Me, Dr. Mindy, Dr. Pampa are going to be doing a world tour this year, next year, for the foreseeable future. We're gonna to be touring together. We're setting up our lectures to play off of each other. We're going to line up the lectures consecutively. I'm number one, Pompa's number two, Mindy's number three, and we're coming to a city near you, okay? Uh, it's going to be incredible. It's called the Platinum World Tour, and we're going to be in your city very soon. So the confirmed dates that we have this year, and there's going to be a lot more added this year and next year, and let me know, if, first of all, let me know where you live and do you want us to come to your city? Uh, do you want us to come visit you where you are? So I want to get a, get a survey here. Where are you? Do you want us to come to your city? Let us know. The next event we're going to be speaking at uh, is probably going to be Paleo FX. Uh, I'm confirmed to speak at Paleo FX. So is Dr. Pompa. We're working on getting Mindy there. Paleo FX is taking place actually just in a month, uh, at the end of April, going into the beginning of May. And I'll be there with Pompa for sure. And Mindy should be there too. So if you're in Austin, Texas, at the end of April... Go to paleoeffects.com, learn about that. Would love to see you there. After that, the next event is KetoCon. KetoCon is in July, July 8th through July 10th. And that's going to be uh, in Austin, Texas as well. And for sure, we're confirmed, me, Mindy, and Pampa will be at KetoCon. That'll be a great event. So if you want to see us all at KetoCon, it's ketocon.org. My coupon code to get, I think, 10% off your ticket price for KetoCon is KetoCamp, camp with the K. And then we have the Keto Symposium in September in New York City. New York City, New York. How many of you are in New York City? We're going to be in New York City in September 24th, I believe. That is my friend Christina Hess's event. And we're working on that, ketosymposium.com, to learn more about that. And then we're going to be in uh, Salt, close to Salt Lake City, Utah in November for the Live It to Lead It seminar. And we're working on other dates as well. So that's just the ones that are confirmed, but we'll be by your city. So I see Kansas, Atlanta. We'll work on Atlanta. I know you want to have us there. I see Indianapolis, New Zealand, Canada. Um, let's see, where else do I? Los Angeles. The UK, Sacramento, uh, Massachusetts, Columbia, Ohio, Seattle, upstate New York. Hey, Scott, we're going to be in uh, Manhattan, New York City. So that, there you go. Uh, that's in September, ketosymposium.com. Boca Raton, that's not too far from me. That's an hour and a half from me. I see Canada. Okay, cool. Well, thank you for sharing that. Uh, we'll work on that, but uh, I just wanted to announce that. Secondly, before I get to some more questions, second thing I want to share with you is that there is uh, the Metabolic Health Summit and the and ketogenic.com, my friend Dr. Ryan Lowry's company, amazing company and an amazing event. They are hosting something called the Keto Awards. And the Keto Awards, let me stop this and share my screen. They're taking votes right now. And I would love your vote for the Ketogenic Awards. If you go to the link that Alina is going to post in the comment section right now, it takes you to this website that you see here on my screen. And they are taking votes right now to, re to reward and to award those in the keto space who are making a big difference. So if you feel like that's me and... I could have your vote. You go to the link that Alina is going to post. And if you scroll down, 
you're going to put the you're going to put the person's name. So if you feel like whatever categories you feel is appropriate to enter my name, I would love that. There's top keto educator, top keto book, top keto podcast, uh, top keto researcher, making positivity louder. So if you want to put my name for all of that, if you feel fit, amazing. I would love your vote. Uh, please head to the link in the comment section that Alina's posting for you and vote. They're taking votes right now through the 27th, which is just a few days away. And then they're going to announce the top three for finalists. So I would love your vote. Please consider voting for me and heading to that link. So thank you in advance. All right, let's get to some more questions here. I'm in New York. Can you please post your schedules? What's your website? Yeah, I'm going to find a way to post it all on a website, a dedicated website. But in New York, it's ketosymposium.com. That's going to be in September 24th in New York City. New York City. DC, bring the tour to us. All right, noted on DC. Juan says, that's amazing news. When I'm buying a ticket ASAP, I'm in Charlotte. Please come to my city. You know, I, I'm thinking that me, Mindy, and Pampa should rent like a super cool RV and kind of like travel from city to city. You might set that up in 2023. Good to see you, Amber. Appreciate you. Lone Star Keto Girl. Go follow her on TikTok. And she has an amazing podcast and Instagram. How many hours do we let our digestive system rest on a daily basis? Well, it takes about 14 to 18 hours to process a standard American diet meal. So I would say at least 14 hours uh, to give your digestive system a break. 18 hours would be even better. Trying, Tim says, I'm trying to teach my granddaughter the proper way to eat on four days. Then I go that I get to spend with her every two weeks. Rest of the time she is home and lives on fast food and high carbs. How do I do this? You know, what I would do is I would I would help my, if it was my granddaughter, I would help my granddaughter understand the connection between the food you eat and how you feel after. So I would ask her, you know, when you eat fast food, like an hour later, do you, do you feel good? Do you feel energized? Do you feel like, you know, playing and, and doing all the things that you enjoy doing? Or do you feel a little tired? And then if you ate like, whatever example of healthy, a healthy meal, do you feel energized? Do you feel better? So I'd, I would connect the dots between how food makes the person feel. Uh, that connection could be very beneficial. And I love that you want to share that with your granddaughter. So congratulations and good job. Tina says, love your podcast. I have to ask if your girlfriend had nightmares over Mindy eating the fish eye. <laughs> Did you see her face on that? That was super funny. That was super funny. Um, she didn't have nightmares, but what you're, what Tina's referring to, because I'll share the story real quick. I shared this on, the, on my podcast release this morning, but we were in Las Vegas. I was having dinner with Dr. Mindy Pels, Dr. Pompa, Dr. Pompa's wife, Andrea, Jessica, Jessica's baby, and of course, my fiance, Natasia. We were at the Venetian at the restaurant called Milo's. Amazing food. And we got this whole fish uh, that was delicious, but it came, the fish came with the eyes <laughs> and Dr. Pompa was saying, you know, the eyes of the fish are highly valued. Our ancestors would really value the eyes of the fish. They would hold contests to see who could win the contest and eat the eyes of the fish. They called it the souls of the, the soul of the fish, but it's also the highest concentration of DHA in the fish. So Pompa, of course, ate the eye and Mindy was like, I want to try it. So I recorded Mindy eating the eye. And then my, my fiance's face was like, whoa, that is disgusting. Have any of you tried the eyes of a fish? I, have, I didn't do it. I haven't done it yet. But um, I'm curious. A, a bus would be more comfy summer for sure. I see Brunswick, Georgia, New York. So Mazzola, we're going to be in New York City, September, ketosymposium.com. What is the best way, what is the best water to get from a store? I, I like glass and I like Mountain Valley. Glass and Mountain Valley is great. I also like Aquapana and Fiji. Typically you can't get those on glass, but Aquapana, Fiji and Mountain Valley. Glass is preferred. Don't forget to vote for Ben and click the like button on this live. Subscribe if not already. Thank you, Laura. All that you said, I agree. Do that. Can you have cheese on carnivore? Cheese on carnivore would be considered a level three carnivore. So it is a variation of carnivore. So absolutely. Oh, you work from Mountain Valley. I get Mountain Valley delivered to me every month at my, in my house here in Bay Harbor. Love them. Love them. I have a glass 
I get these big glass jugs delivered to me each month. Can you drink Zevia during a fast? Yes, you can. Does not break a fast. Continuous glucose monitor is a CGM. That's right. Thank you, uh, Olive. What's the best ways to clean out your colon? You could do a, uh, what is it called? A um, colon hydrotherapy. That's a good way. Anna says, I eat the fish eyes. Wow. Olive says, yeah, it's good. Wow. Kathy says, I have not, but had dinners with whole fish. It's impressive. Any discount code for New York City? I don't have a discount code for New York City. Um, not that I'm aware of. Thank you, Spider Allen. I appreciate that. Let me see some more TikTok questions here. So when, when you, how long before your cell membrane dies? Well, here's how, here's how it works, right? When you, when you go through like an intermittent fast, the innate intelligence start, starts to think, okay, 16 hours, we haven't had food. 24 hours, we haven't had food. We must be going through tough times. We must be going through a famine like all of our ancestors went through. So the innate intelligence starts to ramp up a process called autophagy. I just posted a video about this on my TikTok, autophagy. The definition of autophagy, at least the Greek definition, is eat thyself. It's the innate intelligence saying, oh my gosh, we need to get energy from somewhere. We're going through a famine. Let's look for cells. Let's look for cell membranes that are inflamed. And let's go and, and work on repairing it and regenerating it for energy. But it goes a step further to your question here on how long a cell membrane lives. If a cell has been determined and flagged by the innate intelligence to be a senescent cell, which is a zombie cell, it's a cell that is inflamed. It's not functioning. It's not, it's just creating problems. Then the innate intelligence says, oh, we can't repair this cell. Let's turn on a different process called apoptosis. Apoptosis means programmed cell death, aka cell suicide. So a signal is sent to get rid of that cell. All of this is happening during a fast. This is absolutely incredible. Your body is a freaking miracle. When you don't give it food, you force it to find ways to clean out house and regenerate cells. And then it goes a step further. When it gets rid of a damaged senescent cell, then it sends a signal for a new cell. This is called a stem cell. People pay thousands of dollars to get stem cells injected into them. But guess what? Free stem cells for everybody when you practice fasting the right way. Super cool. So I hope that answers your question. I love fish eye, says Juan, ever since I was a kid. That's impressive. Monica says, we also we always eat the fish eye in the Bahamas. That's, that makes sense. Yolanda says, hi, Ben. First time I catch you live. Welcome. Uh, can you tell me about magnesium stearate and supplements? Is it bad? Yeah, I'm not a big fan of stearate magnesium. I like more of, uh, here are my favorite magnesium sources. I like glycinate, threonate, malate, and citrate. Those are the four that I would go for. Betty Crazy, sorry, I had to step away for a minute. Ben mentioned the percentage of sickness that is preventable through lifestyle. I didn't mention it, but I'll mention it right now. We have 97% plus control over the disease process, I should say. So epigenetics is what I was speaking about earlier with environmental stimulus, receptor sites, membrane, DNA, et cetera. Epigenetics rules. It's determined, Bruce Lipton says, less than 1% of disease is just strictly genetics. I would say maybe 3%, but he knows more than me. So what, he's a smart guy. So maybe one, maybe it is 1%. Meaning you have 97 to 99% control on whether or not you're going to get diagnosed with a disease or not. And that is your lifestyle. So think of genes as the bullets that load the gun, but think of your lifestyle behaviors as pulling the trigger or not. You have control, 97% plus control. Jason, good to see you. Keto, good to do long-term. Not a fan of keto long-term. I like keto flexing, which I talk about in my book, Keto Flex. It's available ketoflexbook.com, paperback, Kindle, and now Audible. So I think ketosis is great, but it's not something I want to do long-term or teach.
And eating too little carbs stall weight loss. Yes, if, if you eat too little carbs for too long, the body could start to preserve fat in order to slow down its precious fuel, the burning of its precious fuel source, which is fat. That's why a keto flex day could be terrific because it allows things to, it allows a change and it reminds the body it's not starving. So the analogy that I gave in my book, Keto Flex, is this is what happens when you are too low carb ketosis for too long. It's like you have a cabin in the woods and you know it's the summer and you know winter is going to be in a few months. So you start storing firewood to get ready for the cold winter months. So let's say winter rolls around and now you've stored about 20 logs of firewood, but there's about five months of cold weather. You're going to burn that firewood as slowly as possible to get through the cold winter months. That's kind of what happens when you're in ketosis for too long. You want to preserve your precious fuel source, which is your fat, and your body will slow down fat burning. You actually, it'll raise glucose and raise insulin and, and that can happen. But if you have a keto flex day, which is a strategic higher carb day where you flex out of ketosis for a day or two per week, that's like your buddy coming over and dumping all this firewood and saying, oh, you only have 20 logs, here's 200. You're going to be more inspired to ramp up the burning. That's exactly what happens with the keto flex day. It helps you overcome a weight loss stall. Awesome, Betty. That's good to know. Can the keto diet reverse type 2 diabetes and fatty liver? Now, this is not medical advice, but I've seen keto be amazing for fatty liver and for type 2 diabetes. So who wrote that? Um, Jemaya, go to go to YouTube, youtube.com and type in keto camp fatty liver or keto camp diabetes. I got several videos on this topic. Kathy Bayer, I started keto, started keto and intermittent fasting in February. Lost 24 pounds. Joint pain improved greatly and sleeping better than I have in 10 years. Awesome, awesome, awesome job, Kathy. Congratulations. That's amazing. That is amazing. You're welcome, Betty. Brenda says, hi, Ben. You have been a lifesaver for my A1C is finally normal. Thank you so much, Brenda. That is Awesome. Congratulations. If uh, you don't know what the A1C is, it's the three-month average of your blood sugars. Very important marker to get. You want that below 5.2, even better below 5.0. How long should you do keto for? Glow says, well, in Keto Flex, I teach it to be in ketosis for eight to 12 weeks, and then you start flexing. And I teach different ways to start flexing. So the book will help, ketoflexbook.com. You're very welcome. Terry, I think, I think that's exactly what's happening for you as well. So flex out. We don't want to do, especially for women, you don't want to do long-term ketosis. You want to flex in and out. Guys too, but guys could be a little bit more aggressive. It also depends on if you are a cycling woman versus a postmenopausal woman. Either way, long-term ketosis is not going to benefit us. We want to flex in and out. We do want to use ketosis and its amazing ability to uncouple mitochondria and lower free radicals, but we don't want to do it forever. It's not something that, it's one tool, not the only tool. How many carbs on a flex day? 100 to 200 grams of healthy carbs on a flex day. Yeah, I'm not a fan of it, uh, Yolanda. That's what I'm saying. I like the other sources better. You go, girl, Lois says. I will listen to you better and get my last 20 pounds off. You got this, Anna. Malini says, after many weddings in the family, I'm finally trying to get back on track. It's so difficult to restart. Well, you know, I could help you. I could be your coach if you want to join my Keto Camp Academy, ketocampacademy.com. But don't worry about the setback. Focus on the get back. Get clear on your why because reasons come before results. And then just take it one day at a time. One little tweak today that you could do better than you did yesterday. And then tomorrow, the same thing. Just a little bit better each day. Get some momentum going. Small tweaks lead to giant peaks. Will you gain weight and will you... When you have a break from it, no, you should not gain weight. Can you do raw liver every day? Yeah. I mean, it doesn't taste that great, but raw liver is super healthy for you. Yeah. Just looking at some other comments that I might have missed. I love that word autophagy, eat thyself, Greek definition. CGM is a continuous glucose monitor. 
let's see what questions I missed on the Instagram. Free stem cells for everybody when you practice fasting. That's right, Alina. <laughs> Thank you, Alina, for your amazing help. Go Happy Belly on Instagram. Go follow her. She is part of the Keto Camp team. Cool. Keep sending your questions. I'm going to be on here for a little bit longer. Thank you. You're amazing. Malini, you're amazing too. Jennifer says, good morning, Ben. I had my labs done last week and I'm told I'm slightly anemic and chronic and chloride was high. I'm following your recommendations in your book. Yeah, there's a great book called Cure that could really help you out with that. Co copper is a missing part. My, my friend and colleague, Dr. Joel Rosen, spoke about this over the weekend in Vegas. I'm about to interview the author of that book. Let me pull it up for you here so you see it. Um, book. Here it is. So let me share this with you on the screen. Share screen. Here by Morley Robinson. Mor Morley Robbins, excuse me. I'm interviewing him in a few weeks uh, for the Keto Camp podcast, but this will help you with that problem you're having. Get this book. It's called Cure, C U R E, Cure Your Fatigue, The Root Cause, and How to Fix It on Your Own. I recommend that book. And then listen to my podcast when I interview Morley. Uh, I believe it's in two weeks, and then it'll come out a couple of weeks after that. So in April, it should be out. Ben, can you share anything on varicose veins? Yes, uh, red light therapy, which is called photobiomodulation. I have my, let me show it to you what it looks like here. Turn it on and boom, red light therapy could help. Um, so I have these big panels, but you don't have to get these big panels. You could just get one. But red light therapy could help uh, with varicose veins. There's also other procedures out there. I'm forgetting the name of one of them. Uh, but red light therapy would be my go-to on a consistent basis. Let me turn this off. Ooh, I'm seeing all red. What are healthy carbs do you recommend? Murray, if you go to ketocampblueprint.com, camp with the K, ketocampblueprint.com, I have a whole list of healthy carbs. Holly Park, and it's free, by the way. It's a free download. Holly Park says, I have heard you and Dr. Mooney both mention not eating first thing in the morning. My day starts at 4.30 a.m. at the gym by 5 a.m. Could you talk more about who shouldn't eat first thing? Yeah, I mean, if you're going to work out first thing in the morning and it's going to be, um, my eyes are like red from the red light. If you're going to eat, if you're going to work out excessively in the morning and you want to have some food, to kind of help with performance, that could work. Or you could just wait until you break your fat, uh, your finish your workout to break your fast. I'm a big fan of mixing things up. So maybe on a day where your exercise is uh, more moderate, you do it in a fasted state. And then maybe if it's going to be more heavy lifting, you have something to eat beforehand. Listen to your body, uh, and then you could break your fast after, or you could continue fasting. I also would base that base that off of the sleep that you had. If your sleep was crap, then you go into a fasted workout might be too much stress for your body to adapt to. So maybe on that day you eat and you don't work out intensely if your sleep wasn't good. Hope that helps. Thanks, by the way. Looking forward to buying your book. Thank you, Murray. Hope you enjoy it. Why shouldn't we, why shouldn't we eat first thing? I usually take a protein shake with MCT. Well, there's benefits to not eating first thing in the morning and going into a workout in a fasted state. Number one, fat loss benefits. So if you're having a protein shake with MCTs, which sound great, you're putting those cal the food calories at the front of this metabolic bus, and then your body has to burn that before body fat. So if you're looking for some body fat, uh, reducing body fat, then going into the workout on an empty stomach, you're putting your body fat at the front of this metabolic bus. Secondly, when you're eating a meal, it takes blood flow away from the brain and other parts of the body towards digestion. But when you go into workout fasted, you have blood flow, blood flow available to crush that workout to crush the dumbbells, the kettlebell, whatever, the run, the sprints, whatever you're doing. I feel better when I train in the fasted state. I have a red light, but didn't think to put it on my leg. Yeah, put it on your body, Betty. It's going to help. Are black beans considered healthy carbs? If you could soak those beans for at least 24 hours to reduce some of the phytates and anti-nutrients and you have somewhat healthy gut, yes, it could be considered healthy. 
Would Sam make me good to heal my IG intestines slash colon? I do that now and then. Sandman is great. It's high dose melatonin suppository. Summer, good question. Uh, it could only help because if you think about, there's only two antioxidants that could get into the mitochondrial, into the mitochondria. Uh, glutathione, which is categorized in that superoxide dismutase category, and melatonin. So melatonin is great, and it could only help. Uh, and Sandman is an amazing product. If you want to learn more about Sandman, go to mitozen.com slash keto camp. Thank you, Juan. I appreciate your kind words. Muhammad says, Ben, is it true you can get loose skin after weight loss because insulin resistance is not fixed, like a low-calorie, high-carb diet with weight loss and loose skin? Weight loss after, excuse me, a loose skin after weight loss is common, but the body could adapt. There's things you can do to accelerate that. So lifting weights, putting on lean muscle mass will help. Getting rid of the bad fats will help. Getting rid of fish oil will help. Increasing healthy amounts of collagen will help. I have a video on my YouTube channel, Muhammad. If you go to youtube.com, which you are on because you're watching this right now on the YouTube stream, just type in Keto Camp and uh, loose skin and the video will pop up for you. Thank you, Alina. You're on top of it. I take, Ashley says, I take magnesium before bed and sleep aid from Dr. Berg and just started taking quality at night. I've been waking up three to four hours every night. Every, I've been waking up after three to four hours of sleep every night, but I can fall back asleep within 20 minutes. Any idea what I'm, any idea why I'm waking up and what I can do to sleep straight through the night? A couple of things, you know, if you're waking up in the middle of the night on a frequent basis, the first thing that comes to mind is the liver. Between two and 4 a.m. in the morning, that's called liver time, especially in Chinese medicine. The liver is very active, dumping bile, detoxifying. And if you have a sluggish liver, that could wake you up if it's having a hard time. So maybe supporting the liver, doing some things to support the liver, eating bitters, PC pushes, castor oil packs, coffee enemas, find some ways to love your liver. Second thing you can do is maybe have a teaspoon of raw honey right before bed to give your brain enough glucose. Those might help. She, Shelly says, thank you so much for your videos, your posts. And thank you, Shelly. I appreciate you. Is almond milk breaking my fast? Yes, it's breaking your fast. Why is there so many people bashing keto? My en endocrinologist told me about keto and I lost over 110 pounds. Let's go. That's awesome. Keto, my story. That is amazing. Congratulations. Well, there's not one way to do keto. So a lot of people who bash keto, they might have, they might be right because a lot of people do keto the wrong way. But when you do it the right way, I mean, amazing results, 110 pounds, incredible. So that's just the nature of it. People are going to support something and people are going to bash something. Everything has polar opposites. It's called the law of polarity. And you're always going to see both sides. So find what works for you and do it is my point. Loving your post, loving your book, such an eye opener. Eye opener. Thank you, Candina. Uh, thank you so much. Christy, thank you for voting for me. You can vote every day, by the way. They allow you to vote every 24 hours until we reach the finalists. So thank you so much. Is fasting a good idea when doing a heavy metal detox? Yes. Um, I When a cell is fasting and when a cell is in ketosis, it detoxes much better. But you got to have the right heavy metal detox protocol in place. Most protocols don't do it right. I'm taking a group right now through a 90-day detox program. I have lost 19 pounds in my first 30 days on keto and intermittent fasting. Let's go. Really bad influencer. That's her name. I'm not calling her that. <laughs> Good job. That's awesome. My husband's doing keto. Lost 38 pounds in four months. Awesome. Olive, that is so cool. I love that. All right, my friends. I hope you enjoyed this live stream. Uh, go listen to my podcast that I released this morning on the Keto Camp Podcast. Every Wednesday, 12 p.m. Eastern time, I'm live with you. Please vote for me for the Keto Awards if you haven't done so already. Stay tuned. We're going to release a lot more new videos here on the channel, the YouTube channel, the podcast, and all that good stuff. I want to say how grateful I am for you. Thank you for joining me today like you do every single week. 
If I missed your question, bring it to me next week and I'll answer it. And if you're a Keto Camp Academy member, I'll see you this Saturday for our group coaching call and I'll be sure to give you detailed coaching on your question. Have an amazing day. Love and appreciate you all. Hit the thumbs up button. Subscribe if you haven't done so already and share this with somebody you know. Spread the message. Keep on healing. You got this. I support you. So does Alina and the whole Keto Camp team. Talk to you soon. Bye.